The Blériot 125 was one of the most unconventional French transport aircraft projects of the late 1920s and early 1930s. It emerged from the design offices of Atelier Louis Blériot at a time when civil aviation was rapidly evolving and safety, reliability, and passenger comfort had become central concerns for airlines. By 1928, Blériot already possessed experience with large aircraft through its SPAD subsidiary, which had produced several multi-engine biplanes and experimental monoplanes. Against this background, engineer Leon Kirst proposed a radically new configuration aimed at solving the major weakness of contemporary passenger aircraft, engine failure. Following a fatal accident involving a single-engine SPAD airliner in 1928, French authorities and manufacturers increasingly favored twin-engine designs. Kirsta went further by choosing a tandem engine arrangement to eliminate asymmetric thrust. The Blériot 125 featured two hispano suiza 12 fbr engine V12 engines mounted in a central nacelle above the wing, one driving a tractor propeller and the other a pusher propeller. Both engines shared a common thrust axis, allowing stable flight even with one engine inoperative. This nacelle also housed a fully enclosed cockpit for two pilots and a separate navigator radio operator station. The aircraft's most striking feature was its twin fuselage layout. Two wooden fuselages spaced 5.6 meters, approximately 18.4 feet apart, were integrated into the wing structure and accommodated 12 passengers in two six-seat cabins. Large sliding windows provided panoramic views, while careful placement near the center of gravity minimized trim changes due to passenger movement. Access to the cockpit was possible via internal corridors through the wing center section. Structurally, the Blériot 125 was advanced but complex. It used thick cantilever wings with three wooden spars, working plywood skin, and extensive internal access for maintenance. The tail assembly consisted of four vertical fins and a single horizontal stabilizer joining the fuselages. The landing gear was equally original. Four wheels arranged in tandem pairs within each fuselage, partially fared to reduce drag. The aircraft could also be converted into a float plane. Construction began in 1930, and the aircraft was publicly displayed at the Paris Air Salon before its first flight in April 1931. Flight testing revealed acceptable performance but serious aerodynamic shortcomings. Poor cooling, limited pilot visibility, control vibration, and longitudinal oscillations plagued the design. Despite modifications, including improved propellers and a freewheel feathering hub system, the aircraft never achieved the handling qualities required for commercial approval. Economic factors sealed its fate. Blériot's financial instability, combined with the formation of Air France in 1933 and the availability of more mature competitors, left no room for a risky and underperforming prototype. The Blériot 125 made its final public appearance in April 1933 and was scrapped in 1934. Today, the Blériot 125 remains a fascinating example of interwar experimentation, an aircraft that pursued safety through innovation but ultimately fell victim to technical complexity, economic pressure, and timing.